Hello Makeup Void, I'm the Makeup Schizophrenic and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I, my mental health has been a dumpster fire this month to say the least. I will get into it in my mental health get ready with me at the end of the month but so I haven't been uploading hardly at all in June and that's because my mental health has been utter dumpster fire. But I'm here today, I have a giant little container, big container of makeup empties and we're just gonna go through my trash and we're gonna talk about the products and ramble on forever and ever. So if you are new to here, hello. My goal is to upload two days a week on Sundays and Tuesdays around 2 to 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time and that just really has been happening this month but that's ultimately my goal that's kind of ideally my schedule so let's go ahead and get rolling the first two products i want to start off with they're not fully empty but i am getting rid of them these are the tresemme revitalized color the shampoo and the conditioner my hairstylist friend said these are some of the worst products i could use on my hair for having color treated hair um these don't do anything for my hair in a productive sense so I am getting rid of these. These are probably like a quarter of the way done so they're not completely full. I still have some product that I can use up. I'm not going to so I'm going to say goodbye to them. Next we have the Vanilla & Co Clean It Zero Cleansing Balm. I love cleansing balms. I love trying out new cleansing balms. I have a new to me cleansing balm that you'll see eventually in a makeup empty. But this one I pretty much got because it is just such a good value for how much product you get. This does such a wonderful job in removing makeup. I adore it so much but Vanilla & Co is not cruelty free. I knew that when I bought it, I didn't care, but I really want to prioritize only purchasing cruelty-free products. So I am saying goodbye to this. I won't repurchase it, but if you don't care about shopping cruelty-free, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal cleansing balm. I really enjoy it. It's just not cruelty free. That's why I'm not going to be repurchasing it. I do have it in the original version. They have a bunch of different kinds of cleansing balms, like one that's more brightening, one that is more for clarifying the skin. I just have stuck to the original, but I'm going to say goodbye to it. Next, I have probably my only big makeup empty wise most of this is skincare and sunscreen but i do have the milk hydro grip primer i finally finally used this bugger up i used this for like three months straight trying to use up this bugger and it made me realize just how long it takes to use up makeup it takes forever and I use two primers every single day for my makeup so you think I'd be going through primer a little bit faster but this took so freaking long. I do really enjoy this product. I think it's a good grooming primer. It's not the most grooming primer I've ever tried but it is a very solid one. I also went through a mini of this as well. This is a very solid primer. I just have like the majority of my primer collection are grouping primers so I don't feel a need to purchases and the pr makeup primers that I've been really enjoying kind of do the same deal as this so it, I, I'm gonna miss it I have definitely missed it in the past few months since I emptied it but I'm not gonna repurchase it but if you ever want to try this out it's really incredibly good I have it's not fully an empty but I repressed this powder and since I repressed it it was just never the same so that's why I'm, it's like half an empty half de half a declutter this is the covergirl clean fresh powder and yeah I repressed it and it's just the formula hasn't been the same I think I pressed it too hard or something I had to really scrape into it to get product out and that's just not how the powder is when you buy it fresh so I'm not going to be repressing any more of the clean fresh powder because this was a definite fail in terms of repressing I I don't think I did a good job in repressing it and I regret doing that because there was quite a bit of product still in here so this is half an empty half a declutter I really love this powder I really do but once I repressed it it was just an awful decision to do so so I'm gonna let go this is probably like my all-time favorite powder so if you don't repress it this is such a stellar stellar powder I can't get over how much I love it it just looks so beautiful on the skin now my backup that I've been using that I've also hit pan on 
it's not an ideal summer powder for if you have oily skin. It definitely doesn't last a full day and I'm wearing makeup for a long time. So it's not really good for the summer moments, but throughout the rest of the year, I really love this powder. I love it so, so much. It is so good, so amazing. It's sad that I repressed it and I just change the formula something weird would happen but this is sunny so my next thing do i only have two of these in here i feel like i should have way more let's see if there's anything more no there's not okay so i have the bliss sunscreen this has been my go-to sunscreen since i started wearing sunscreen every day this year it is the blockstar invisible daily sunscreen it is a mineral sunscreen spf 30 i've gone through so many of these i'm surprised i only have two in here now my big beef with this is that it's just you don't get a lot of product and with sunscreen you you need your sunscreen you need to have a lot of product like you need to use a lot of it at a time and so i go through these very quickly but i love this sunscreen i really freaking do it is so good but i decided to go with the verse sunscreen this time around because even though it's like five dollars more you get way more product in here i think this is only 1.4 fluid ounces and the verse is like like two, two point something fluid ounces so I'm saying goodbye to this but if you don't care about the price for sunscreens these are so incredibly solid these are $20 I just go through sunscreens so so quickly I can't justify buying these anymore but I really like it I really love this sunscreen it is so good it is a tinted sunscreen but it doesn't like really change my skin tone at all but it does it's a mattifying sunscreen and that's why I really like it it's more mattifying and these are just so good these are so just so good it's just like I go through them way too quickly to justify the price of buying them so much like I go through these once a month and I need my sunscreen to last a little bit longer than that I just I need more product to come with it because I just go through these way too fast another sunscreen I have is the elf woe glow sunscreen this is a broad spectrum is it chemical or I don't know um but this is also a makeup primer. My problem with this is that I don't like glowing sunscreens. I just don't. They don't wear the grayest on me. I have oily skin and so I would only use this on the weekends when I didn't have to wear my makeup for a long time. Next I have the Verse Dew Point Moisturizing Gel Cream with green tea extract and aloe leaf juice. I am a big fan of gel moisturizers especially during the summer. I don't like a heavy moisturizer. I'm actually going to go into the moisturizer next of the one I've been using like uh, late winter, early spring for it. But this is just so good. Um, it's so good. It is two fluid ounces. I think this is 14 or $15. This is a great affordable sunscreen. I also like the Bliss sunscreen, the um, their hydro gel moisturizer. I was using that religiously for years, but Verst is just a brand that has me ultra curious. And for the most part, all of the Verst products that I've tried, I have really enjoyed. So I keep wanting to try Verst. I think this was the first product from Verst that I tried. You can get this at Target and I think maybe Amazon, but I always buy it from Target. And I really like this. It's lightweight. You can use this in the morning and the afternoons. And when it comes to a morning skincare routine, I do not have one. My morning skincare routine is just wiping my face down with my cellar water and putting on the sunscreen. So I don't use it in the mornings. I don't know how it lasts underneath makeup for a long day where I just use this at night. And for at night, it's really stellar. It just spreads evenly on the skin. It adds just enough moisturizingness to the skin to make sure my skin is hydrated overnight, I should probably get into using this in the morning. The that I was using towards like late winter, early spring was the Verse Recovery Mode Advanced Night Cream with fermented purple tea, green coffee, and microalgae. This is for the dry skin people. If you have dry skin year round, you're gonna freaking love this thing. My big B with it is that it has a, you press down to disperse the product. And I even promised that, Oh, there is a little bit more. Okay, there is a little bit more product. I'm just going to wipe it on my hand. 
but it is super hydrating, super nourishing on the skin once it gets to start cooling down into the late fall, early winter months. I'm definitely going to repurchase this. It's just for summer. It's not it for summer. But this is a stellar sunscreen. I enjoyed it a lot. My biggest thing with this is because it's kind of like that press down pump, you don't know you're out of it until you're out of it entirely. Next, I have the Good Molecules Instant Cleansing Balm. This is a great cleansing balm. I used it all the way out. There's like technically a tiny little bit that I could probably scrape out. I'm not going to. But this is such a good cleansing balm. I do like the Vanilla & Co. slightly more than this, but this is great. This is a great cleansing balm. It gets the job done. It leaves your, it doesn't strip your skin at all. It just, it just keeps your skin. It removes makeup so well. I do not use a specific eye makeup remover and I find that this removes eye makeup just wonderfully. It's phenomenal. If you are looking for a cleansing balm that's a little bit more affordable, um, this is 2.5 ounces. The Vanilla Co. is like way more than that. But this is a solid if you're looking for a good cruelty free cleansing balm. This is absolutely amazing. This is such a hit for me. Next, I have the Inky List 15% Vitamin C and EGF Serum. Uh, one point... What is this? Um, this is just one fluid ounce. So, fun fact about this, I placed... I ordered this probably back in like February and Sephora accidentally sent me a second one but if they didn't accidentally send me a second one I wouldn't be repurchasing it. it this is a chemical what is this what is this it's not like a pure vitamin c serum it is like one that's made in a lab so it's not like pure but so i don't really i never really got the brightening experience from it you can technically use it in the morning and night i only do skincare at night so maybe if i used it both in the morning and night i would notice a little bit more of I would notice maybe the brightening more but I don't I like it I want to try other vitamin C serums but for me what really got me was the packaging I know vitamin C is very volatile and if it gets a lot of direct exposure to sunlight it can weak or any light it can weaken the effectiveness of it so the reason so that's why I bought this is because it's a completely covered container in terms of hydration and just being a really nice serum on the skin, I really like it. I just don't see what it's marketing for. I, I don't see the brightening on my skin. And so I have the backup that I just opened. I'm going to go through it. But after that, I'm going to purchase another vitamin C serum to see if I can get another more brightening effect. So that's how I am with this. It's If you're just looking for another serum to add to your collection, to add to your nighttime routine, this is very nice, but in terms of what it claims to be, it's not it. Another hair care product I have is the Odell Leave-In Conditioner. This, so I was using the Paul Mitchell Skinny Serum for years. That was my post shower conditioner. I love the Paul Mitchell Skinny Serum so much, but I'm trying to tame how much money I spend in general. And so I started trying this leave-in conditioner and it's nice. I like it, but it doesn't leave my hair as silky smooth as the Pulse Skin or the Paul Mitchell Skinny Serum does. It doesn't do the same thing. It is a nice moisturizer and it says to only use like one or two pumps in here. And I use way more than that. I use like three pumps of this to get through all my hair. My hair absorbs product like nobody's business. So I need a lot of this product. It doesn't weigh down the hair if you use a lot. It doesn't make your hair super oily or greasy. But, but the thing is, I have very oily skin. But my hair is very dry. So I need a lot of moisture. And so when I use a lot of this product... It's really good, but if I'm just doing like an itty bitty baby pump, like that's not going to do shit for my hair, okay? Like I need a lot of this product to make it work. I've gone through several bottles of these as well. 
I don't know after my current bottle if I'm going to repurchase it because for me this is just so meh. I've kept buying this because it's more affordable but at this point if I don't find another leave-in conditioner that I really enjoy I might just go back to the Paul Mitchell one because I, I literally have been using that. I use that religiously for like six years and I love this so much. I was just looking for something more affordable but I like my Paul Mitchell more, but this is really good. If you don't have as dry hair as I do, you might enjoy this more, but my hair is so dry and it eats a product so incredibly much. I just need something a little bit stronger than this, but it's good. It's great. It's affordable. It's cruelty for you. Get a fluid ounces out of this. It's great. It's just not as hydrating as I need for my hair. Okay, so my last hair care product in here is a little sample. This is the L'Oreal Metal Detox. Uh, I don't I don't really know what this is. I used it like as a post shower um, conditioner for my hair. This is a pretty nice serum and so I was thinking oh it's more of a serum like the Paul Mitchell. It's going to leave my hair really nourished and light. It didn't do anything. I if I if I this was like double the product I probably would have noticed more of a difference for it. I couldn't do anything for me. It was fine. I mean, like it didn't damage my hair, it didn't screw up my hair, but it didn't do anything spectacular. I like the Odell leave-in conditioner more than this, so it's just kind of meh. I said I didn't have a lot of makeup products in here, and I actually really do. I have a lot of makeup products. Oh, here's another Bliss sunscreen. I, went, I rambled about that long enough. I do have it. I also used up the Ulta Beauty Tinted Moisturizer Broad Spectrum SPF 24. Again, this is like makeup takes forever to use up. Why do I have so many foundations? Why do I have so many primers and powders? Why do I have so many? It takes forever to use up. I did eventually use this up. This is a glowy, dewy, tinted moisturizer. Not my thing. Great in the winter. Great for days where I'm not wearing my makeup too terribly long. But if I was wearing this now, as the temperature gets higher and higher, this would be so bad for my skin. It would break up probably instantly. I can't imagine this doing well for my skin at all of this time of year. So I'm not going to be repurchasing this. I did use... I did a full face of Ulta Beauty, I think in like December, and so I came back and reviewed it, but I think it was like tail end of February or early March where I didn't have to wear a mask at work anymore. So that's how I eventually used this up pretty quickly. I was using this like pretty much daily when I didn't have to wear a mask anymore. It doesn't add a lot of coverage. It's a tinted moisturizer. What do you expect from a tinted moisturizer? It's glowy. It's nice. It's again, if you have dry or even normal skin, I could see you really enjoying this product. But for my skin type, it's a no-go. In here I have the Ordinary Niacinamide Serum. I love this serum. I am like probably a third left of my current bottle of this. I love the Niacinamide Serum. So between the Inculus Vitamin C Serum and these, this, these are my two serums that I'm using every single night. I enjoy this. I go through this pretty quickly. It's only... how much product is in here? I don't even know. Oh, it is one fluid ounce or 30 milliliters. So I just use this every night before bed. I love the serum. I think it does really good job in preventing any breakouts. This year has been a really good year for my skin. I just gotta say, getting into skincare this year, my skin has been enjoying it so much. I've maybe had only one or two breakouts since the beginning of January. I, I have noticed, I feel like come summer we're going to get a little bit more breakouts, but I do think it's largely towards using my niacinamide serum all the time. I love niacinamide in my skincare. It's probably my favorite skincare ingredient. I, I just get so much joy whenever I use a niacinamide product, and this is so affordable, and I can't stop using it, and I'm going to be repurchasing this over and over again. I don't feel like I need to spend any more money on a niacinamide serum. I'm just really good with this. Um, let's do some two declutters because these are just insanely old. I have the Ulta Beauty Gel Eyeliner in the shade Blackout. This is just so incredibly dry and this is the Essence Metal Shock Eyeshadow. They don't make this anymore. This is years old. I do not feel comfortable putting this on my lids anymore so this is a declutter. This is also a declutter. It's just so dry. It's so incredibly dry. It could be because of age because I've had this for a long time as well but these just gotta go. These gotta be declutters. 
I have some mascaras in here. I am really bad at stretching out the life of my mascaras. All of these should have been used up long before I called it good. I have the Ulta Beauty Curled Up Mascara. This is just a fine middle of the road mascara. It's nothing spectacular. I got it in the shade Black Brown. There's nothing brown about this mascara. Maybe if you got like really in close intense in my face, like to the point of using my makeup compact, getting close to my face, maybe you'll notice the brown and you don't really see it at all. Uh, Essence Lash Princess. I love this mascara go on on and on about I've been using this for years and this last mascara should have been thrown away months ago this is the elf big moon mascara I got this in the shade deep brown this is another like it's not really a brown mascara maybe if I don't do a weaned eyeliner every day I see more of the brown I have some pencil brow products in here let's go through them the essence make me brow eyebrow gel mascara because I use red eyeshadow in my brows, a tinted brow gel is something I'm just not using. I did use this one up. It's really good. I've gone through so many of these over the years. Um, it's just completely dried up because I didn't use it so long. Next, I have the NYX Micro Brow Pencils. Uh, what shades are these? So I have the shade black. I was using black when my hair was like green and black. Um, I used this one up and then I had the shade Auburn which was using for when my hair was red. I just go through brow pencils way too quickly to keep buying them and buying them. And good if you like a skinny brow pencil I do recommend these. And I went with NYX because for drugstore they seem to have the best range of brow colors. So like at the drugstore this was like the only red brow pencil that I could get my hands on. So I was just using these and I like them. I like them a lot. If I had, if I just decided to say screw it with eyeshadow, I'd definitely buy the Auburn again for my brows, but it's just easier for me to use eyeshadow for my brows. It's just easier, but these are good. These are really good. Just have another Essence Make Me Brow gel in here. I have my NYX Epic Ink Liner in the shade black. I've gone through so many of these over the years. This is just my go-to winged eyeliner, brow, whatever. Oh, eyeliner pen, this has just been my go-to for so long. It is a brush tip applicator and that's what I prefer in my liner pens. I don't like felt tip whatsoever. They dry up so incredibly fast. I have not met a gel or a felt tip eyeliner that I've liked. So I just stick with the Epic Ink eyeliner. I probably need to buy another one because my other, my current one is getting a little bit more used up. So the next time I go to Target or Walmart, I should probably pick up another Epic Ink liner. But this is really good. It the older it gets, because it's a brush tip, it starts fraying a little bit, so it's not as precise the more you use it. But because I cannot apparently do just a small, tiny <laughs> winged eye, I, apparently I just can't do it. So for this is good, because my winged my wings are always like I try to start them super soft and skinny, and then they just explode every single time. Every single time. My, my, I'm not good at wing and I've done it every single day for I don't know how long, but <laughs> this is just my go-to. I don't plan on changing it up anymore. I use, I do a wing almost every single day that I do makeup. So I just need, and this has a lot of juice. This does last for several months. So it does last a long time. I think if I use a felt tip eyeliner, then I wouldn't get that much use out of it. I, I just don't think I'd get the same effect. So this is, this is staying in my empties. Every empties I do, you're probably gonna see one or two of these. Another declutter, just because this is so incredibly old, is the Becca Under Eye Brightening Concealer. I've had this for so long, I don't know how long. I eventually hit pan on it. <laughs> but this is just so old and so gross. I need to let this go. In my older purchase, I made, I bought the ColourPop, not the ColourPop, the e.l.f. Color corrector under eye thing that they came out earlier this year. I picked that up, but then they just launched like their potted under eye correctors, and I'm like, I wish I waited like a week so I could buy that instead because I really like a potted color corrector. I really liked it for that. This is just so cr incredibly old. I just need to say goodbye to it. I have a couple lip products that I actually used up. Who am I? <laughs> I don't use lip products. I'm not even wearing a lip product today. My go-to is just the Lawless Forget the Filler Lump 
lip plumping mask. I just use this every single morning when I do my makeup and then I don't apply another lip product on top of it. <laughs> I'll do a full beat and then I'll not do lip products. For when I stopped, when I could not wear a mask at work, I was doing lip products all the time. And then I just got lazier and lazier until I stopped doing it all together. <laughs> So I have the Essence 8 hour lip liner and this is the shade Just Perfect. This was just the perfect lip liner. I love this lip liner so much. They don't make this shade anymore which bums me out because this was perfect for me. I love this so much but now it's gone. I can't buy it again and it makes me sad. Another product that's been discontinued is the Milk Kush Lip Balm in the shade Canatonic. Now technically I could scoop out what's left in the bullet and use it as like a cream blush or something this is so incredibly old I'm not gonna do it with that but I so like mine is scraping it out I did use this product up I'm calling it empty I love the magnetic closure on this it is just so satisfying this is so good but this is so incredibly old so like I used it up but I didn't use it up I'm counting it as used it up because it's so old I shouldn't <laughs> I should not have even put it on my lips for the age it was but I did because I don't care <laughs> I don't care at all. So we got that. And then the last thing is I actually have a lot of makeup empties. I thought this was going to be mostly not. But I used up the Tedessa Myricks Universal Blurring Powder, Balm Powder thing. I don't know. This, I just used it as a pore filling primer. It's not the most pore filling, but it adds a nice smoothness to the skin. I notice even though a pore filling primer doesn't really fill in my pores, it adds a nice smoothness to my skin, which just makes makeup application go on so much nicer. And there was one day recently where I think I was still using this and I forgot to use a smoothing primer. At that point, I just didn't care to apply it or maybe I was like doing like foundation or something and it was too late. Ugh, my skin did not look good that day. Mm -mm. Did not look good so I definitely need to use this up. I like it but because it's it's nothing outstanding, actually something I really do enjoy about it is that I have my big glasses. These are my glasses. They are big, they are here, and they have a large like nose bridge thing and no matter what I do, foundation, powder, whatever, always wears off on my glasses right there, no matter what. But I did find with this, it wasn't that bad. Like, it was bad, but it wasn't as bad as I use it. It's not enough to buy a full size, but I'm glad I tried this out. It was a nice mini. There was quite a lot of product in here. It did take me several months to use it up, so I enjoy it for that. But I wouldn't repurchase it. I'm glad I tried it though. I'm glad I got the mini to just test it out, try another smoothing primer. Technically, you could also use this like on top of foundation and set it like, use it like a, as a setting powder. There's no way in hell I'm doing that. No, no, no way. No way was I ever doing that. So I didn't do it for this. I just used it as a primer. First, the primer is so pretty good. It's just nothing. It's like when I have my e.l.f poreless putty primers it's kind of like why I spend so much money when I have those it just doesn't make a lot of sense now my last three things are powders nope this is speaking of my poreless putty um my putty primer my salicylic acid one is 99% used up I used up this baby and every time I talk about face products or applying products my primers my makeup bag that I did or anything where I have to mention primer, I'm always talking about this primer. This is always in a conversation. Now, in terms of the salicylic acid, acne fighting, <laughs> I didn't really notice, I think, but at this, because when I switched it, after I used this up and I switched to the Denesa Myricks, I didn't, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I'm getting like all these breakouts. That that putty primer must have been fighting it all that long. It, it hasn't. It hasn't. So it's not that big of a deal. I love this one. I probably also because it's green. I decluttered the original one and now I feel like that was incredibly stupid when this pretty much is just identical. I don't know skincare bread and fits from this at all. Maybe I just like it because it's green, but it's not color correcting at all. Like it's just because it's green, it's not like it's going to cover any redness on your skin. It's not going to do that for you, but I love this primer so much. I 
brought out my backup to use recently and then I re remembered I have a mini of the brightening putty primer so this will be my next undies but again it doesn't really do any brightening or anything effect to it I'll talk about it more in my next empties whenever that is but that's a deal with that elf halo glow setting powder this is the old packaging the new packaging is pink I have a backup of it ready to go I really enjoy this powder so much it's not mattifying I mean it's a powder so there's a little bit of mattifying to it but if you like do you like a glowy blush or bronzer and you don't want to really cover up the glow this is great for that I removed the stopper from here and used up every last bit I could I thoroughly enjoy this powder this is something I just need to have in my collection it's just something I gotta have and I love it I missed it I bought a back of it I haven't opened it just yet because I've been trying to play with other powders in my collection just to kind of get more use, more feel from them. My Ulta Beauty loose powder I've been trying to use quite a bit, especially now it's getting warm. When I did the full face of Ulta Beauty, I was like, it's fine, it's whatever. So I've been trying to get more use out of that before I bring this back out, but I love it and I miss it. And I had mine in the shade Light, and I'm pretty sure that's the shade I bought in my last the last one. I don't know where I bought translucent. I don't know. Last product in here. We've been here for a hot minute. This is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Perfecting Setting Powder. There is still a tiny bit left of it. I'm calling it an empty, guys. I don't care. This is an empty in my book. I did repress this powder and it was totally fine. So CoverGirl didn't work. This one repressed was amazing. I've already hit pan in the one I've been using lately. I go through powders very quickly because I use a lot of powders in my face. Largely the way I use this powder is to set my other under eyes because it's so light and it's a mattifying powder. This is very mattifying but for most things I want a mattifying look. I love a good glowy. I use the powder on top of it but I still feel like I have a little bit of glow uh, left over from my cheeks even though the blush is like entirely gone. <laughs> Uh, I need to declutter the blush I use because it's not good at all. It's, I mean, yeah, it disappears. Once so you, when the blush I use, it's just like, wow, this is really pigmented. You blend it out. You're like, wow, this is really pigmented. But I have oily skin, so I need to set my face in powder. And it's like, hey, bye. I'm like, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Love this powder, though. Between this and a CoverGirl Clean Fresh powder, I am totally content with just these being the only two powders in my collection. I'm not going to declutter all my other powders, but... Between this, the Clean Fresh one, the LK Look Glow, those are the only real powders that I need. They really are. So I don't know what I'm doing with my life, but I, I love this. Already hit pan in my other one. And finally, this is empty. Finally. Finally, of course, when I come back to YouTube, I'm doing a super long video. Super long video. But we went through all my empties, we did it, we got there. I kept procrastinating on this video because I was like, oh, this product is almost used up. I'll film this video after I used up this product. And then it was like, oh, I need to wait till I use up this product. And then I came in with a huge empty. So <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Give it a like and subscribe. And whenever my next video goes up, I will see you then and have joy.